And we are back, and it is time for the Elsewords. This is the one-topic show part of the show where we talk about things that are coming up. This week, we are talking about some of the movies that are coming out this next year that we are excited for. Some of these are going to be obvious. Some of these are going to be, wait, what? So some of these will be subject to, probably subject to change. I'm going to skip right to February, unless there's anything in January you want to hit. Well, January, we've already good. we've already started. So we've, we've seen Insidious, The Last Key is out. I feel like there's there's been really diminishing returns on the insidious movies the first one was was great if if you like something that's basically a rip off of poltergeist uh it's a, it's a good rip off of poltergeist yeah. and then the second one was okay and then the third one was really bad and i don't know that it's improving i love the concept i love the the lead actress and her character i love the Geek Squad guys, essentially, that she she tools around with, one of which is, uh, I want to say it's actually James Wan, or the writer of the film that became the director of the films. I don't remember exactly, but I don't know what the expectation is of a horror movie that comes out the first week of January. I'm su- surprised that there's a Paddington 2, but it looks cute and kind of awesome. I don't know what else. The, the end of the month is bringing us the new Maze Runner. I kind of yeah. thought the Maze Runner was like the uh, Insurgent series that they just kind of gave up, uh, or or what was the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe films too, the, the Chronicles yeah. of Narnia, where they 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 get to a point and they're just like, oh, no one's really coming to see these anymore. So I am surprised as shit that the Maze Runner is coming out, but I guess since it's only a trilogy, it's okay. At least it doesn't look like they're trying to do the the last book in two parts. Uh, which is yeah. probably the best thing they can go with. We watched the first Maze Runner, and it was it was interesting. And then it ended in a point of like, holy shit, you have to watch the next movie. But then we never watched the next movie. Yeah, and I, I think it probably had something to do with the fact that Peter Baelish, Littlefinger, whatever, uh, is is in it, and he's like the Scorch. And I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't need to see any more of you right now, Ed. I'm gonna move on to February here because, like, the, again, like I said, there's some like Den of Thieves interests me a little bit but not to go see it in theaters probably more of a you know rent the movie or something later on but february 16th has black panther that tra- yeah. i saw that trailer it's thor ragnarok and oh good god i'm like i want this in my life right now bring this yeah. to me i kind of feel like black panther didn't necessarily get the short shrift it just seems like so long ago that we were talking about black panther and then they recently as 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 recent as a month ago uh dropped the avengers infinity war trailer yeah. and so i i feel almost like i forgot black panther was happening not just before it but also so soon like it seemed like oh well black panther must be happening after avengers because we're not seeing a lot about it right now and i i feel like that's a huge mistake but every time it pops up everybody seems to get super excited about it and i am just all over this movie this looks incredible and i i really think that this has a lot on its on its back of high expectations from the audience at this point, but it looks like it's earning those expectations. And everything I see, it's just so exciting and seems to be bringing some really new and needed things to the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, in a way that, say, Ant Man or Doctor Strange didn't. You know, they were consistent with what was out there. They were fun and they were they were fully enjoyable movies. But this is a movie that I feel like just builds something that wasn't there. Like that that first time I saw The Winter Soldier and I walked out and I'm like, holy shit. And the first time I saw Guardians of the Galaxy and I'm like, holy shit. Like, yeah. I did not expect this from Marvel superhero movies. This is that next level of that. Like, not just, oh, I'm going to have that same reaction. It's like, oh, I feel like I'm going to get more out of this than I've gotten out of any of them so far of doing something new and and exciting. So you're right, I'm I'm totally up on this. Now, I won't say that it it ranks above 50 shades freed for me because uh, how can it? I just I haven't seen enough spanking so far in the 50 shades <laughs> universe. I really need that third dose of it. Oh god, please yes, he said breathlessly into his partner's ears. I I I I hate that an actress that I really like because of a TV show that she was on, honestly, is is known most for her association with these movies. And and she shouldn't 
feel bad about it. It it it's it's kind of like the same thing that happened with Kristen Stewart, and I I hope that she doesn't get the backlash that Kristen Stewart has had for a long time, and I think is hopefully finally uh, managed to get out of. Yeah, with the people just like, oh, you're so full of shit because you were in those goddamn Twilight movies. I hope that Dakota Johnson doesn't get the same thing for being in the Fifty Shades movies. It it certainly helped jumpstart her career at a level that she probably would have struggled to get to without getting this kind of blow up project. But I just also, I look at these movies as being just so horrible, not because of what they're about, but because of how pathetically they are about them. And because the source material is such shit when it comes to BDSM and, and the Christian Grey characters just God awful. And in a situation where we are in a looking at all the abusers in Hollywood already to have this film series coming out and finishing off right now is just such a slap in the face to the me too slash times up movements that I just kind of go, how, how do we feel okay with this? But it'll come out. People yeah. who are still interested in, in taking it all the way to the end. will will watch it. And then hopefully she gets to do, better films than that uh because she i feel she deserves it yeah but we'll see so march and we're not gonna hit every month because there's I, I think august there's no movies in there that interest me march for me death wish i'm curious about because this one has some of the controver- same controversies that ghost in the shell had because this is based off of a manga slash anime and apparently there's some whitewashing in this or something um, I think I'm. I could be confusing things. Which one are you talking about? Death Wish coming out Friday. Isn't, March. I thought Death Wish is the remake of the Charles Bronson movies, starring Bruce Willis. Is that the case? Oh, I, yeah, I, it is. It is because I'm thinking of Death Note. Sorry. You're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're right. That was the right. the Netflix yeah. uh, original. So, anyways, rip-off. scratch that because didn't know that. Although, very funny, the Death Wish is right above Gringo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, um, so a wrinkle in time i'm looking forward to uh tomb raider because because mainly it seems like they're basing this more off of the recent game that they did uh with the tomb raider series well tomb raider Uh, just seems like it's the not to disqualify it it's it's the female indiana jones and by that i don't mean oh they're just taking indiana jones and gender bending it but i mean the giant world adventure scale Mm -hmm. type movies and yeah. that's why I, I find Tomb Raider so exciting. I think there's such huge potential there. It, it, just in the same well, way yeah. that but the Mummy you... movies, Brendan Fraser's character was kind of like an Indiana Jones character, or the National Treasure movies were uh, Indiana Jones-esque in the stories they were telling. I think Tomb Raider has such huge potential, and I think the movie, the first movie delivered on that for the most part, and then the second movie didn't, and they, they never followed up after that. And it may have been because Angelina Jolie was so big that to relegate her to being Tomb Raider at that point in time wasn't a good enough fit for her to stick it out. Yeah. Whereas since this actress is not not established, but she is still not at that level, this could be big for her and it could be big for the franchise. And I'd like to see this franchise True. have success. And then Friday, March 30th. Oh, good Lord. So I'm hoping this movie does not let me down. Ready Player One. I've seen oh, both. Are you talking about Lean on Pete? <laughs> which i assume is a movie about a mossy tree uh yeah. but no ready player one this is the first movie that i've seen from where i read the book before and i'm like they've taken the pictures that i formed in my mind from reading the book and they've made it a trailer they made it two trailers can they make it a movie so not terribly familiar with the book so i can't i can't say that i look at those trailers and and the, second, the same excitement the, that other people do. The second trailer is the one that explains the whole book. You know, it explains everything. Yeah, I've, I've and, seen that, and and I I, yeah. I, I get it. I I have enough understanding of what the book's about. I yeah. just don't have the the attachment to it that other people do who've read the book because the book is it, it, to many people amazing. It is to me it it by sound only by by not having read it. Yeah, nostalgia. For nostalgia's sake mm-hmm. and uh, nostalgia in the place of story is how when i hear it described i think oh like everybody says you should read this you would love this book you are you are the, the guy in this book 
And I'm like, yeah, that's maybe why I shouldn't read it because it's not going to, it's not going to pull me out of my reality. It's going to pinpoint all the things that I feel like are wrong with me. Yeah. I have issues, but still it, well, it, it looks not- good. It looks interesting. And, and B- beat is pointing out that I left out Pacific Rim. That's because I haven't seen the first Pacific Rim. So I did that intentionally because I haven't seen the first. So therefore I, I wouldn't feel right. Recommend like for me saying I'm looking forward to the second when I haven't seen the first. And I saw Pacific Rim and I remember enough to feel like I didn't see Pacific Rim. <laughs> uh, but, but, but I, I get beats was, thing because Pacific Rim, yeah. especially cause it's got John Boyega also from attack the block. Uh, if we're going backwards could potentially be very fun. I, <sighs> Am I into kaiju? So I haven't watched the new Godzilla. I haven't watched the new King Kong. And I know that there's some other new Godzilla movie that's supposed to team them up. And I, I have not had any interest in any of those. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe that's not my not my bag. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, but, but I, but I, what I, I think I, I, what I think is in your bag, though, will be in April. Well, wait, uh, one thing you okay. skipped over in yes. March uh, yes. was the Black Widow movie that is not called Black Widow because Marvel couldn't get off their fucking asses to make a Black Widow movie. Uh, that is March 2nd, Red Sparrow, the <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence movie that is blatantly Black Widow. <laughs> and um, and if it succeeds, and I don't know if it will, it may be, it may be the, the, um, the upstart film of like, oh shit, this is actually a lot of fun and really good, like Atomic Blonde was with Charlize Theron. If it does anything like that, Marvel should feel a good swift kick to the nuts uh, yeah. because they could have done this already and they should okay, have done yeah. this already. No, you say this and I'm looking from like, like just doing a, the, a Google search of it. I'm like, all right, yeah, this is on my list because Marvel's done the Marvel legacy. Let me use the quotes around that um, version of, you know, a, a new black widow that they barely touched that you could have easily seen being the, you know, being called red sparrow and all that twerp. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to Yeah. I'm, I'm adding that to my list. I'm going to forget death. I, I see. The problem is I just picked the wrong March 2nd movie. Cause I thought death wish was death. Note. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, April on Friday, the 13th, uh, it's a, it's, I, I'm pretty sure this is one of your picks here. Um, the new mutants is coming out. Um, I'm I want it to be, I wanted to be good, man. I, yeah. I I I love the New Mutants more than I love the X Men. Yeah. When when they both came out, the X Men, I came in at like one sixty three. The New Mutants started maybe about a year after I started reading the books, and because they were closer to my age, they were more like my peers. They were in school. They were just starting out and discovering their powers. Like the X Men were already established. They had a history. Uh, they were fighting in space. The new mutants were were fighting on Earth and and dealing with complications in life. And the single favorite comic of my entire youth was was a new mutants comic that I got signed by Chris Claremont. Uh, Sienkiewicz, who's the artist that they're pulling heavily from for this for inspiration, is just amazing. And again, you know, changed how I saw comics, especially superhero comics, being able to be. I really hope this is excellent. Plus, Magic, one of my all-time favorite characters uh, in general, not just as part of the New Mutants. I really want this to do well, but yeah. I want to do well because it's a great rendition of of a movie for the New Mutants. While the New Mutants, I watched the trailer and and even with the the Demon Bear Saga stuff, I don't necessarily see New Mutants in the trailer so far. But they can they can do something to surprise me. They can impress me. They they can make it be something great that maybe isn't like the Dirk Gently, like isn't Dirk Gently as I recognize him, but is still a great ton of fun to watch and, and see and be a part of. This could be the other X-Men property that I'm excited for when the X-Men films have let me down so badly. Yeah. Um Hopefully. the next one that I think we've been waiting for for a while. Uh, Super Troopers 2 because they did that Kickstarter or Indiegogo thing like three years ago it seems like um, but that comes out on Friday April 20th I'm looking forward to that I mean because I like the first one yeah it's it's up against Rampage which is another rock movie <sighs> yeah true and, and I, I, I love 
man, I love Dwayne Johnson. Don't get me wrong. But he, yeah. he needs to start being challenged. <laughs> I, 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 I see that, that people are, are digging the, the new Jumanji film. And, uh, and I don't think anybody in that movie is playing against type. So it's just, it's just good mindless fun. And I'm, I'm cool with good mindless fun. But too many of the rock movies are looking the same. And and I see this rampage thing, and it just looks that same level of sameness. And it's based off of a video game that I like a lot, but is a video game that doesn't need a goddamn movie. And I don't know that this is doing the game's origins any justice with what it is. But that's yeah. based off of what is effectively teasers at this point. Yeah. Could be fun. So, I just no, yeah. low expectations. Low expectations. I don't true, expect it to be Baywatch, but I don't necessarily expect it to be Jumanji by that point either. And it looks yeah. like a full week of stuff coming out because the the untitled Cloverfield movie had it looks like it's been moved to that week as well. And I know that mm-hmm. that had gotten pushed back. If they pushed it back to go up against Rampage, maybe they think they've got something there. Yeah. Um. In May we get uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Um. And then we get Solo, a Star Wars story. Not really. T- the other movies aren't really. I don't care about Slenderman and all that. I mean, I, I feel like I have to care about Slenderman because I, I'm on Podcast of Terror and we did the pre, the creepy pasta episode. One of the first movies that we reviewed in pod, uh, Podcast of Terror was a Slenderman type film. But I, I don't know anything about this movie to really say that I'm yeah. excited for it. it. It could be cool. Infinity War is is going to be a beast. Yeah, like it is. It is something that I think every other movie of the summer is going to compare itself to and if anything beats it that's going to be a huge win for whatever movie does and i i I don't i hear mixed things about solo like they expect it to fail i don't know that anybody expects a star wars movie to fail but i i can certainly see they expect a star wars movie not to be the success of the other star wars movies it'll be interesting to see what they can make out of that film with with how much they've had to redo yeah but oh, god damn, you know, we get we get Donald Glover as Lando. <laughs> yeah. Like so, I, I, I always go back to I don't want to see Han Solo not be Harrison Ford. I don't necessarily want to see Lando not be Billy D. Williams. But if we're going to get it, Donald Glover is the one to go with. Yeah. So June, we have Deadpool 2. Um, Ocean's 8, I'm mildly interested in. Um, the Incredibles two, I I love that little teaser that we had. One I will mention, but I'm not I'm not a big fan of. Um, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. Oh Jesus um, Christ! It, <laughs> and then the the Sicario two, uh, Soldado. All those what was coming Sicario out. Sicario one. Uh, Sicario one was the starred Emily Blunt and um, was it Benicio del Toro? Yeah, okay, yeah, it was Benicio del Toro. That was who I thought it was. But I'm like, wait, no, it's not Benicio del Toro. It's the other guy. But yeah, it was. Uh, is that a political intrigue spy thing, or no? It's a drug cartel thingy. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, that's uh, why I, I I don't know it because they're yeah. two perfectly great people. I I I sort of remember seeing a commercial or something for it at one point. I am yeah. surprised as shit that it did well enough to get a sequel. But I don't know what it's. I I don't expect that it's like trying to be Jurassic World or whatever. <laughs> Does Jurassic World look like shit? It's like it's the, not, the new one. I, I saw the trailer and it looked like shit to me. I've I've not see. I'm not a big fan of, of the Jurassic Park series myself. So I like um, Jurassic Park. Like and yeah, like, everything they've done past that has been like yeah. just like hey. like, like I, I I like the first one. I mean the first one scared me when I was a kid, which I mean it was supposed to, and all that. But I mean I haven't had really had the interest in you know seeing these new these new ones. You know, so I'm like, eh. I mean, it's out there. Hey, cool. You know, go watch it. Uh, um, I, I just I saw that the trailer and it just it felt like the same things again, over again. And it felt so evocative of the Jurassic Park sequel, which was, hey, everything you liked about the first one. Yeah, we're going to fuck that up now. And uh, we're going to bring in a bunch of characters that, and do all this stuff that makes no sense to even remotely do this. Yeah. Uh, just because we want to show you more fucking dinosaurs wandering around. And uh, and Chris Pratt because you like Chris Pratt. I do like Chris Pratt. Well, well hey, hey speaking of all. yeah, speaking of more of the same. I mean, in July we get the Purge four. <laughs> I haven't watched any of the Purge movies. 
I haven't either. I've not, I've I've not been, been there. there. Yeah, but um, but I'm gonna try to go through these quickly. Ant Man and the Wasp, Hotel Transylvania, Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again, the sequel to Mamma Mia, which I feel like if they do a third one, it'd be Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. My my, how could I resist you? Yeah, like they're just gonna keep. Eventually, they're gonna go like to twenty, and it's gonna be the whole song. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It did uh, Teen uh, Mission Impossible Six and Teen Titans Go, the movie or sorry Teen Titans Go to the movies. Which okay, now that I hear that title, I sort of want them to do like a, a Mystery Theater three thousand slash Rift Tracks thing where you're watching another movie, <laughs> like 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 you're watching the Teen Titans Trouble in Tokyo movie while the other ones. Are the here. Teen Titans try to sit through Justice <laughs> yeah. League. And at some point, you just see Robin beating his face with his own staff because he can't <laughs> believe what kind of shitty stuff is happening up on the screen with the, his mentor and all of his favorite heroes. And yes, Cyborg man. looks at himself up there and is like, I quit. Just like walks out. <laughs> By the way, Cyborg, one of the, the better parts of the Justice League movie. Uh, he, yeah. The actor did a really good job with a character that I couldn't believe that I even cared about. Um. Yeah, so... In August, we get The Equalizer 2. I'm only mentioning it because it's a sequel. Barbie. And I really like the first Equalizer. Again, nothing yeah. like the, the TV series as I remember it. But you, it's hard to go wrong with Denzel, especially Denzel kicking ass. Yeah. Barbie, which I'm assuming is based off of the doll. We're you getting the for, Predator. Oh, oh the, what, is, is, that, is that the... That, I believe that is the introduction of the Predator creature into well, it's, it's a new movie again yeah see, see, that was my bad I, I was like okay the per, what does it say a biopic on uh on any you know insert <laughs> yeah, <name> yeah. Of... <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> but then uh the 10th has a remake of scarface because we needed that oh god no um i don't i don't like mobster shit yeah, anyways well, but yeah um and then we have I'm just going off the title alone crazy rich asians in on friday august 17th then september Continuing with the whole Denzel thing. Um, oh, wait. The... No, no, no. Go back. Friday, uh, or not not Friday, but in August on yep. the 17th, The yep. Happy Time Murders. Okay. And The Happy Time these? Murders is the murder mystery with Muppet characters, but not necessarily wait. the Muppets. I think it's uh, Melissa McBride is, is a part of it. And yeah, I, I've been waiting for this movie to come out because I had a horrific dream when I was a child recurring about a a axe wielding Muppet killing uh, all the other Muppets on the Muppet show. And I was I was there as like the scooter of the show. And then Henry Winkler was the guest that week. So <laughs> this is one of those things where my childhood horror fantasy comes to life and goes into film. Please. I'm tell really me. excited for this. Okay, yeah, I'm getting excited for this too. I'll be even more excited if the puppets are made by Jim Henson. They are. Uh, oh I my god. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So if I'm you, if you haven't so ever in. seen Meet the Feebles, uh, you can you can whet your appetite with Meet the Feebles, which is an old Peter Jackson movie around the, the time of Bad Taste and stuff before he like started getting busy with the Hobbits. But I'm, yeah, I'm I'm jazzed for the Happy Time Murders. So I, I don't want to skip what is the the no the, yeah yeah I expect yeah, no. Barry Diamond in the midst of things like Equalizer two and shit. I I thank you for this, and I hope I do not forget that when it comes out. But now it, going to September, there's not a lot in here. Darkest Minds Alpha Robin Hood. Robin Hood um, has uh, Agerton from The Kingsman in it, right? I believe so. The Kid Who Would Be King is another movie in here. It, we're a little far ahead now where I some of these things yeah, I don't this is I don't think we're gonna know much about what they're about. Yeah, this is when when we get into September with it being being the beginning of the year, even sometimes in August, this is where the movies will get uh pushed back. This is where you're seeing a lot of like if you if you look at the list, we'll have it in our show notes. Um you'll see like the untitled Cloverfield movie or this or that it, it it's it's under it's understandable that this october brings us T yeah, something T Taren that is, yeah Ter yeah Taren yeah Taren is his robin hood yeah <clears throat> paul anderson is a guy at bisburn um jamie dornan there's your 50 shades freed connection uh jamie fox is playing little john that's okay I, i'm that's yeah. pretty cool i i mean 
we're we're just a year out from when Guy Ritchie did King Arthur, and yeah. and I see this, and I I don't know I don't know that the world's screaming for another Robin Hood take, let alone a a gritty sort of modernized but still in the past thing. I don't know exactly what they're going with for it, but we'll see. I I really like Robin Hood as a character. It's just it's it's been done so much in in my lifetime alone, and I I'll, I'll have to see. But October on the fifth. Right in the beginning of the month, we get what I still don't know is the spinoff from Spider-Man. Is the related to Spider-Man? Is he not? The Sony said, fuck it, we have him. Let's make a film with him. Venom. Yeah. So Venom's coming out. That's, again, this is one. I, if depending on if there's hookups, this could, you know, get bumped back because it's so far enough. Um, again, October, this is looking like, like looking at a lot of this. A lot of stuff that you're like, wait, really? Did this have to be done? Um, there's a, ho- a new Halloween reboot. Um, there's a sequel to Ghostbumps, or sorry, not Ghostbumps, Goosebumps, which I saw that I was like, that needed to happen. Um, the Halloween reboot is uh, one of the people that's in charge of it is Danny McBride, which is interesting. But they're bringing back Jamie Lee Curtis again, and they're wiping out all the continuity after the first Halloween to do this new Halloween. So Halloween 2, which was a direct sequel, gets wiped out, as well as Halloween H2O when they brought back Jamie Lee Curtis before to tell her story of like, oh, here's where she returns. And it just, it seems really weird that we've had shifts in the continuity before and they just gonna keep doing it because Halloween apparently can only sell if Jamie Lee Curtis is a part of it. Yeah. And if we just tell the same story over and over again, I'm not super excited for it, uh, although they seem very earnest in what they're trying to do, and Carpenter seems to be on board for it, which is important to yeah. me. But I, I just, I just don't know, man. Yeah, Nothing I've um, heard about it makes me feel like this is the one true Halloween. But, and, and again, I feel like you and Matt would be the ones that we would go to on this one because I mean, you guys do the podcast of terror. Oh um, well, then we'll just shit in our hands and throw it at the screen like monkeys. <laughs> Isn't that what Matt does at movies, anyways? That's what he does at at meals and uh, <laughs> religious ceremonies. <laughs> so moving on to November, um, November this is again where we start to pick up, um, you know, X Men Dark Phoenix, uh, Mulan from uh, the Dis- Disney live action remake of Mulan. Weirdly enough, because the last one is uh, it, it's it's iffy. Doctor Seuss is the Grinch. Have you seen any of the Come- the stuff for this? No. Okay, so I, it's, I have not. it's a prequel to the Grinch that, that stole Christmas. It is a young Grinch. It's him kind of cute-ish and innocent, and it's animated. It's not a live-action thing. They're not doing anything with, with Jim Carrey and trying to bring him back and then de-aging him or, or putting him in a small body like Baby Man or whatever. That it, it's, it's a, it looks like the Lorax that they did yeah. the animated film of, so it's not going to be scary shit like Mike Myers is a cat in the hat. Um, it's more like Horton Hears a Who, but they're, it's a prequel story. Because you're right, we have seen the Grinch movie not too long ago in the live action, and so doing it again seems unnecessary. But they're releasing it in November, so I assume it has nothing to do with Christmas, but may get kids warmed up to watch the Grinch cartoon movie and then go and watch whatever Grinch version they want for Christmas as well. And I'm okay with getting them into the original cartoon. That's great. We'll see. Since it's a whole new story to tell, I have no expectation. But I also yeah. like don't know that it needs to happen because it's not really Dr. Seuss. It's just stealing a character from Dr. Seuss and doing this whole other thing with it. Yeah. So if yeah, it's not Seuss in it all, what does that give me? Yeah. yeah. I mean it, it the, the good part that I will give it is it's it's done by Illumination Entertainment, the guys who do Despicable right. Me and and Sing. And they have Benedict Cumberbatch voicing the Grinch. So I'm like, all right, I can see this working. Um, the other one, because it could be a Christmas movie, because the one that comes out the week before that I'm looking at, I'm like, oh, we should probably mention this too, is The Nutcracker and the Four Realms. That to me tells me that that's going to be a Christmas movie, that they're just doing it here because you look at December and these movies are going to get trampled on in December. 
That, um, that's true, but they are yeah. they are doing Christmas stuff then in November, which is not far off. Yeah. And I mean, God knows we start decorating for Christmas uh, before Halloween even arrives. But it also could be because it's not the Nutcracker. It's the Nutcracker in the Four Realms. It could be taking the character of the Nutcracker and doing more with it that then leads into Christmas. That's how yeah. I would do it if, if yeah. I was making these decisions. Yeah. Um, uh, is Holmes and Watson the third of the Robert Downey Jr.? No. Holmes okay. and Watson is the comedy. I was actually going to mention that next. It is directed by Ethan Cohen and it's written by Ethan Cohen. Stars Ray Fiennes as Moriarty, Kelly McDonald as Mrs. Hudson. Um, I'm blatantly going around who this. Uh, okay, I like this casting. Hugh Laurie as Mycroft, playing Holmes and Watson, Will Ferrell, and John C. Riley, respectively. Okay, so someone's putting my nuts in a shredder. Yeah, it, it is a. <laughs> A, as it says on IMDb, a humorous take on Arthur Conan Doyle's classic mysteries featuring Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Tell me humorous is in quotes. Uh, no, I'm no. <laughs> it's, it is it is one of those things like I look at this and I'm like, uh, maybe. But then you have the following week, you have Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Gr of Grindelwald. And then the week after you have... Or as Jezebel um, likes to call it, why the fuck are you putting <laughs> Johnny Depp in Johnny another Depp, goddamn yeah. movie? <laughs> Yeah, and then the week after you have Ralph breaks the internet to wreck it. Ralph two, nice. So in the month, I didn't even the know of, that was coming up. Yeah, in the in the month of November, you get two instances of John C. Riley. That's most that we've gotten all last year. <laughs> um, and and I'm teasing about the the Farrell Riley thing. When when they yeah. when they're together, they they are capable of making yeah. some really funny shit. Uh, and, and also and also Ethan Cohen does good stuff. Yeah, I mean, he does. He does. He does. He does. He stretches the gambit, honestly. Um, and it would be nice to see them play characters that are actually maybe age appropriate for once. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then in December, this is again why I said there was all these. I'm I'm going to go right down the list here, starting with the on the 14th. You have Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. This is the Sony animated Spider Man movie that is going. Um, that is focusing on Miles Morales. Mortal Engines. I know nothing. Aquaman, the Aquaman from the DC movies, directed by Justin Wan. Bumblebee, this is a prequel, from what I understand, focusing on a bum Bumblebee from the Transformers with John Cena in it, apparently, for some weird reason. Then Tuesday, Christmas Day, Bohemian Rhapsody. Part of me wants to go see this just because, like, one, I think they did excellent casting with uh, Rami Malik. You, you know, as like with seeing that photo, I'm like, Oh hell yes, he looks like Freddie Mercury. But then also, like Beat pointed out earlier, to see the what is going to happen if this is even going to happen because of everything that has happened in this recent history of it, things with with the producer. I mean, we've got two major movies coming out where they've had the director get replaced in the midst of it. Between this and Solo, are the ones that I can think of where, hey, we're doing this movie. Oh nope, no, we're not. Uh, but someone else will step in and, and take it over and finish it off. And and I mean, this last year it was Justice League that that happened to, for different reasons. But yeah, yeah this is it's it's to be put into the December twenty fifth spot of that. They still feel like at, at least right now that it it's going to be good enough for that kind of attention. Uh, hopefully, and 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 maybe it absolutely will be. I. You know, I'm a I'm a big Queen fan, and the actor playing Freddy seems like he was a very good choice. Like you said, I, I'd like this to be good. I don't know what this movie is other than a biopic, and and if that's enough to to get me to go to a theater to see it, or if I wait to see it on TV and just blast the shit out of my speakers so I can enjoy all that music, we'll see. But hopefully, yeah, basically, from what it looks like here, the Christmas Day is biopic day because the other movie is Mary Poppins Returns. Um, which, okay, sorry, I, I'm a little bit off with that because you know it's not going to be a biopic, but it looks like they have some bits that might be a little bit. Um, but this is actually going to have, um, you know, it's it, gosh, it has Dick Van Dyke, Emily Blunt, Meryl Streep, Colin Firth, Angela Lansbury, who I did not know was still alive. Yeah. Um, I had well, I hadn't seen her in anything recently, and I'm like, either she's just joy retirement or she's not here. 
uh, Julie Walters. Um, the guy from Miranda. Hamilton. Uh, yeah, 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 he's Manuel, Manuel Miranda. He's apparently um, playing Dick Van Dyke's original character. Yeah, with Emily Blunt stepping in to play Julie Andrews' original character of Mary Poppins. Yeah, honestly, this looks really cool. Like to see this. Like I, I like. It, it the, seems like the right movie to put out for Christmas Day because yeah. it, it. I assume it's going to be made for a level of the age group that watch Mary Poppins, which would be kids, but it would have the family nostalgia for the adults who grew up watching the original Mary Poppins. And if I, I can't imagine Disney can't making this work it, as much as again, like Mary Poppins has been one person to me for, for my entire childhood on up to mm -hmm. see someone else step into that role is weird and, and feels a little wrong but emily blunt is an excellent actress who could do fantastic job with it if, if you're going to pick anybody she was probably the right one to pick so i i have to imagine that it's going to be a huge film yeah i i just i it would take some real doing to screw this up true and this is where i like i like honestly there's a bunch of movies in there that, that we didn't even t hit on so, you know, the article comes to us from, I believe it's from Collider, uh, but we'll, and we'll have it in our description. So you can see, I mean, you could see all these. Um, and actually, Growly, I disagree with you on the whole, I'd vote Anna Kendrick instead of Emily Blunt. Anna Kendrick seems like the obvious choice because of the fact that she's done the Pitch Perfect series. But Emily Blunt has, well, one, she's British. Two, she can sing. And all that. And I, I see her more of as a Mary Poppins than Anna Kendrick. Um, Although and, Andrew, and, and, Anna Kendrick can do anything because she's Anna yeah, Kendrick. Yeah, and Anna uh, Kendrick to me seems a little bit a little too young to play. What, what I, I think what we're saying, Growly, is is you're not wrong, but we have to share the wealth. Uh, we can't let Anna Kendrick do everything because she, when she could, she absolutely could, <laughs> but we shouldn't do that because it's not fair to everybody else. Like. In, in 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 the everybody gets a trophy world uh you got to you got to give other people a chance you got to yeah, give yeah, other people you know a chance. you know mrs john krasinski needs a chance here it's like i would have seen death wish with anna kendrick i i would see the solo movie with anna kendrick uh i i would i would see the the um what is the pixar one that's coming out the wreck it ralph Incredibles. With with Anna Kendrick, I would watch The Incredibles if they just superimposed Anna Kendrick in every frame, uh, hanging out with with Pixar creatures. I would, <laughs> I would absolutely, yes, you're you're a hundred percent correct. Yeah, she she could and should do it and and all else. There's that uh, Comcast oh, okay, commercial okay. I think where they have like no or maybe it's Hulu. Hulu. It's Hulu. Where th there's there's like four Anna Kendricks and I'm like that's just a drop in the Kendrick bucket. Uh, we need we need a, a no, thousand see, here's, more. Of here's those. the thing. No, he, here's what's going to happen. That movie's going to come out, and then Anna Kendrick's going to get on Twitter saying, "I would have done a but much better job than Emily Blunt. I love her, but I would have." No, done no, so she would never say that. She would absolutely never say it because she's perfect. Uh, no, what will happen is the the you internet will will create a about the last. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it will, the internet will create a demand, and we will start a petition for the the Zack Snyder. And a Kendrick cut of Mary Poppins that has to exist uh, because we conceived it in our brains. Uh, and, 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 well, and, well, I'm saying it now. I want the Zack Snyder Han Solo film cut of the film. Of course you do. <laughs> who, couldn't, who couldn't want that? All right. Nobody's asking for the Lord Miller cut, <laughs> which is just perfect. Oh, gosh. And on that disappointment, we are going to end the show. For more on this Galactic Network podcast, go to GNCast.com. That's G-N-C-A-S-T-S dot com.